In this video, we'll discuss ulcerative colitis. We have discussed some of its features with Crohn's disease in our previous video. Please watch that. Now, let's discuss ulcerative colitis here. In inflammatory bowel disease, oral tolerance is suppressed against the dietary antigen. I have discussed pathogenesis of the ulcerative colitis in the other video, but briefly here. Oral tolerance is suppressed against the dietary antigens due to immune dysfunction in the intestinal cells leading to severe inflammation in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. The CD4 cells in the lamina propria of the intestine secrete inflammatory cytokines. The abnormal immune response of the intestinal epithelial cells occur due to many microorganisms like Salmonella, Shigella and other bacteria and the substances that alter the intestinal flora, metronidazole and ciprofloxacin may also be responsible for it and elemental diet. Psychogenic factors may also cause ulcerative colitis and among the environmental factors is smoke. This is the one substance that decreases the risk of ulcerative colitis and quitting smoking increases the features of ulcerative colitis. Now pathology of ulcerative colitis. It's a disorder limited to the large intestine and has ulcers and hemorrhages in the mucosa and submucosa and number three the lesions are in continuity whereas the lesions of the Crohn's disease have skipped areas. Now 50% of the cases of ulcerative colitis involve rectum but it may extend to colon and in 20% of cases it involves entire colon. So ulcerative colitis is a disorder of large intestine and involves mucosa and submucosa and the ulcers are in continuity and most common site is rectum 50% of cases and entire colon is involved in 20% of cases. Now what's backwash ileitis? When entire colon is involved, inflammation extends about 1 to 2 cm into the terminal ileum. This is known as backwash ileitis. Now the gross pathologic features of ulcerative colitis may be discussed in mild cases, severe, long-standing, permanent cases and in remission. So what happens in mild cases? In mild cases, the mucosa is erythematous and has fine granular surface resembling sandpaper. So in mild cases, redness with granular surface like sandpaper. But in severe cases, mucosa is hemorrhagic, edematous and ulcerated. So ulcers appear in severe cases. Their inflammation, cryptapsis and loss of goblet cells. So cryptapsis and ulcers in the severe cases. Number three, in long standing disease, there occur lead pipe appearance and inflammatory polyp or pseudopolyp. So long-standing cases, lead pipe appearance and pseudopolyp. In fulminant disease, there develops toxic colitis or toxic megacolon. Mucosa in fulminant cases is thin and ulcerated and all the layers are involved that may lead to perforation. So the fulminant cases, there may occur perforation, which, but here in fulminant cases, mucosa is thin, ulcerated and perforated. And in remission, mucosa appears normal, but is atrophic and and featureless. So mucosa is normal appearing but atrophic and featureless and entire colon becomes narrowed and shortened. Complication is sclerosing cholangitis and adenocarcinoma. Now the microscopic features of ulcerative colitis. What histologic features suggest chronicity not infection in ulcerative colitis? Number one, crypts are distorted and reduced in number. There are gaps between the crypt bases and muscularis mucosa. So crypts are distorted and reduced in number and gaps between crypt bases and the muscularis mucosa. Neutrophils infiltrate in the crypts giving rise to cryptitis and crypt abscesses without infection. And number two, some patients have basal plasma cells and multiple basal lymphoid aggregate. The mucosal vascular congestion, edema, hemorrhages and inflammatory cell infiltrate that differentiates it from the infective origin. Serologic markers of ulcerative colitis. Now what's ANCA? ANCA is anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody and is positive in 70% of cases in ulcerative colitis and about 10% cases of the Crohn's disease. Where the other test ASCA, Saccharomyces cervicae antibodies, they are present 70% of Crohn's disease and about 10% of ulcerative colitis. So the two tests are opposite 
positive to each other A and CA positive in 70% in ulcerative colitis and ASCA positive in 70% of the Crohn's disease. Now the clinical features of the ulcerative colitis. It may present acutely or over the time with diarrhea and fresh bleeding or blood stained mucus. Other features are tenesmus, urgency and feeling of incomplete evacuation. Proctitis may cause constipation. So acute features with diarrhea or with bleeding and tenesmus, urgency and feeling of incomplete evacuation and proctitis may cause constipation and what about examination? On examination there is tender anal canal and blood on parietal examination and tender colon on palpation. Now complications of the ulcerative colitis. Severe hemorrhage 6 to 8 units of blood in 24 to 48 hours and if this happens it requires colectomy. Number 2 toxic megacolon and what's toxic megacolon the colon diameter is more than 5 to 6 cm and loss of hostrations features of toxic megacolon are fever of more than 38 degrees centigrade heart rate more than 120 per minute and leukocytosis of more than 10.5 other features are dehydration altered consciousness electrolyte imbalance and hypotension and the toxic megacolon also requires colectomy if it doesn't respond to medical treatment. So severe hemorrhage and toxic megacolon requiring colectomy. Perforation may occur that leads to peritonitis. So in toxic megacolon or in fulminant disease, perforation may occur leading to peritonitis. Number three, toxic colitis. Ulcer may perforate without dilation. Number four, ulcer may also lead to fibrosis and stricture. So ulcer may perforate or they may lead to fibrosis and stricture and there may occur carcinoma with with the strictures. Laboratory findings of ulcerative colitis. In acute cases, there is increased C-reactive protein, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and platelet count and the leukocytosis. But the hemoglobin is decreased with anemia and serum albumin is decreased in severe cases. So in acute cases, increased CRP, ESR and platelet and leukocytes and decreased hemoglobin and decreased albumin. Fecal lactoferrin test is a specific marker of intestinal inflammation but is not a specific for ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. And number two, fecal calprotectin. It correlates with histological inflammation, predicts relapses and detects pouchitis. So fecal Fecal protectin test detects histological inflammation, predicts relapses, and detects pouchitis. Now, findings on barium enema. Earliest radiologic features in barium enema is fine granularity, and the later mucosa becomes thick with collar button ulcers in the mucosa. So, these are the features of barium enema. Earliest features is a fine granularity, and later the mucosa is thick, collar button ulcers in the mucosa. And in the long Long-standing cases, barium shows loss of hostrations, mucosal irregularity and ulcerations. Sigmoidoscopy assesses the disease activity and colonoscopy assesses the extent and the activity. Activity. An endoscopy is characterized by erythema and mild friability. And in severe cases, endoscopy shows spontaneous bleeding and ulceration. CT scan and MRI are not helpful as endoscopy, but the typical features are mild mural thickening that is less than 1.5 cm, absence of a small bowel thickening, increased perirectal and perisacral fat and adenopath.